who taught you how to do formats? Where did you learn how to do formats? And how eye-opening was it from when you went from Memphis to Mid-South to see how things were done? <laughs> well, I've, I've told you, I started actually doing formats, not from scratch, but writing them, transcribing them when Teeny used to have me keep track of if the Louisville station was playing their interviews correctly and giving them all their time. Because, I mean, Nick sometimes used to send tapes in those days that sometimes the station would just cut off like eight minutes at the end. I don't know if it's because the tape was unusable or they were f***ing around. But anyway, so I would transcribe the stuff and I got used to being at timing and seeing where breaks were and how long segments were. And then, obviously, Memphis TV was the first time I saw segments and it was, or formats. And I've said even, you know, they didn't put anything on paper in those days that if you found it could be in any way incriminating. So it was literally desk, interview so-and-so, ring, match so-and-so versus so-and-so, and they'd have the time on it. And, you know, whatever. There was no details. But it was all laid out verbally. And you just had to retain it and know what people were talking about. And then going to, you know, Mid-South, where it wasn't that the formats were more complicated in writing because there still wasn't a lot of shit written down that could be found and used against the business, but it was now we're taping two shows in one night. And we've talked about Mid-South Wrestling. There was the bicycle of tapes around the territory because... They had so many regular towns they ran every two weeks that they had to stagger the television program. If we shot it on May 1st, it would air the following weekend in three or four of the markets and the following weekend after that in three or four more. And, and it'd take five weeks to get all the way around the horn. So we had to keep up with what number program had aired most recently in that market so we wouldn't do anything or say anything that hadn't aired on television yet, even if it had been shot. And in the pre-internet days, not a soul knew what the fuck had happened in Shreveport at the Boys Club. So that was where I started learning how to not only keep track of the formats, but pay particular attention to how, you know, things were timed and everything. And then you know, with, with the WCW creative team, especially with, with Clash of Champions, we're live. So even though it was loose, it was looser than this because it was two and a half hours, that's the first live program that I ever formatted. You know, and, and obviously I was getting input on, Rick, how long do you want for your match? I'll put it on paper. And whatever, but then I had to put all the bells and whistles in the middle of it, figure out where the interviews would go or how long they might take. And in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, I got to where I, that's the only math that I can do in my head flawlessly is counting time. Now I can do it on the fly. And so, so much time spent in the truck and TNA and Ring of Honor and having to, you know, when the producer says, I said, well, what was the time on Seg 4? Eight minutes, 42 seconds. Okay, we're 42 seconds heavy. Before we come back up, I got to figure out where the rest of the program, we can cut 42 seconds. Uh, take 15 off the goddamn entrance. We'll pick it up halfway down the aisle and give them their cue in the match 30 seconds early. See what happens. Boom. Shit like that. Does any of that make any sense? I think it makes sense. Again, that was a big show. I'd like to hear one of these days you should do just an average show where there wasn't. I don't know, do a, average shows, kid. Oh, you know what the hell I'm talking <laughs> about. Instead of a multiple year story culminating on a big show. A show more than the Well, I, I grabbed that one because that was an important match. And, and I will do an, I'll do another one next week if you want or whenever. But especially when they have an important match, it just drives me crazy when they've got to this point and they, they think it's. That's like starting the seventh game of the World Series and deciding halfway through the first inning, oh, we got to sell some fucking feminine hygiene products. I'd like to hear you do one from the early days of Smoky Mountain when you were trying to establish everything, who the wrestlers were, who the stars were, the promotion, the towns. Maybe next time you could do one of those. Well, send me some notes on what you want to you wanna hear, and I'll, I'll tell you what you want to hear. <laughs> 
Okay.